<laughs> so, kidnapped by mimes. I'll just scratch that off my list next to kidnapped by the circus and stolen by gypsies. So, yeah. as you can see, I'm wearing chef jacket today. Um, if any of y'all know me, I have been onto the stage quite a few times. I dance. I also read poetry. I also have a degree in culinary arts. I'm also a trained sushi chef. Yeah. 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 So, whoever has work, ever worked in the food industry, can you make some noise for me real quick? <laughs> My people! <laughs> How many of y'all have worked in the kitchen, particularly? <laughs> I feel so happy now. All right, so... <laughs> I've been wanting to come up here for a while and actually tell you about some of my misadventures of my own while working in the food industry, uh, starting with school. I went to the culinary school. There's a little culinary school in Fort Worth in near the cultural district called Fort Worth School of Culinary Arts. It was started... Um, okay, I can't remember the history correctly. I'm sure they'll excuse that. But it used to be a really nice restaurant called The Balcony. It's a beautiful restaurant, but one of the weird, strange facts about it is it has an enormous kitchen. Anybody who's ever worked in a restaurant knows that when you work in a restaurant, you don't want a big kitchen. Anyway, they turned it into a school. I went there right out of high school, and going from homeschool to something that's not like being homeschooled was a bit of a culture shock for me. And one of the things that they do is they have what they call lab hours. We open up the school and we serve the public as a restaurant. We uh, hold these brunches on, sun uh, on Sundays. And my very first one, I was so scared that I thought I was going to pee myself all while I was walking up the stairs to get up there, including the, the 45 minute drive there. But when I got there, I felt, realized I was the only student that had gotten there. And I was so nervous that when I shook the chef's hand, my hand was doing this. I had never served the public before, and I guess I kind of took it a little too seriously at the time. And to make matters worse, when I got there, I took my knives, I reached in, and suddenly pulled my hand out and noticed I had a big stream of blood down my hand right here. One of the sheets had fallen off my paring knife, and I had stabbed myself within five minutes of arriving to get started on prep work. That's efficiency. And what does head chef bring me but a great big bowl of lemons to peel? <laughs> so... That was my first day. It wasn't half as bad as I thought it was going to be. I ended up serving soup, pretty simple stuff, uh, working on the line a little bit. And then when I went to the pastry room the back that evening, the pastry students were playing wall ball with a bad batch of biscuits. I started thinking, is that normal? Chef! And he, he pokes his head and says, they were doing this. And they go, I don't know what she's talking about. So, yes, there was lots of shenanigans, some in which I can't even tell you because you'd probably never eat there, or you probably would just to go there and see some of the weird things that they do back there. Uh, other one was the last brunch I went to. I came in 20 minutes late, and the head chef was there chopping vegetables like a madman. I was like, why are there no students here? I'm late, and there's no one. Am I on the right day? Apparently, nobody signed up for brunch that day. So the head chef was on his Bluetooth chopping vegetables and doing prep work while calling up every single chef in the Fort Worth district that had ever graduated from here saying, get your ass over here, we are calling in favors now. <laughs> Another fun day, uh, let's see. All of our fish was burnt, um, a bunch of our prep work was missing, and two of our three desserts fell through and didn't work. So when you walk inside of a uh, pastry kitchen and the pastry chef's doing this number over a cookbook, you suddenly realize that you're kind of in trouble. So somebody kind of leaned over and said, hey, chef, what? There's 20 pounds of, of uh, cheesecake in the freezer. To the freezer! <laughs> we took all of this cheesecake, poured it inside of a mixer, and the next thing we knew, we turned it into mousse. And everybody loved it. The people were just raving about all of our famous cheesecake mousse. It became known as the Culinary School of Fort Worth's signature cheesecake mousse. <laughs> we had people writing reviews on this shit, I shit you not. <laughs> One of the best days ever. But moving on, um, I actually was working in a restaurant before I even graduated. Uh, it was my second semester of the culinary school and this big six foot tall broad shouldered Mexican man came into the classroom one day like tattoos all up his arms, and, I, and everybody's like, 
Here's my wallet. <laughs> Turns out he worked at the Japanese restaurant down the street, and he asked me to go apply. This dude scared the shit out of me when I first met him. I will change his name for the fact I don't have his permission to be telling these stories, but I'm gonna go ahead and tell them to you anyway. <laughs> um, this is the story of how I got to be introduced to him. Uh, he was telling me a bit about himself. He says, yeah, I've worked in all, all over Fort Worth, um, particularly Colonial Country Club at one point. And one time at Colonial Country Club, it was like three in the morning, he was the only person there doing prep work, so he decided he was gonna play some of his techno music. He plugs it into his stereo and he cranks it up and, and you can hear all the way downstairs. <laughs> and so he's just working away and then he gets this phone call. That's weird, it's 3 a.m., no, nobody knows I'm here. Melvin Martinez, can I help you? It was the manager of Colonial Country Club who lives in a house across the golf course. <laughs> yes, sir? Melvin? Yes? Turn that shit off. <laughs> so he's, he's beating it. He didn't realize he had plugged his music into the intercom system at Colonial Country Club. <laughs> out to the hallway to find one of the security guards says, dude, why didn't you tell me what was going on? Security guard looks at him for a second. What? <laughs> <laughs> and that is how Melvin introduced himself to me. He turned out to be my mentor for the next two or three years while I was working in the industry, and I wouldn't have survived a day without him. This man was my hero. The really big Mexican guy that liked to pick me up, sling me over his shoulders, and carry me off. Well, some of the other fun stories that we had of misadventures is, uh... <laughs> shh. <laughs> Do -do 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 -do. The first time I ever worked on the line, I had been working there for mm, four or five months as prep cook. I had never worked on the line in an industrial kitchen, and it was Thursday night. Not as bad as a Friday night, but still, it gets can get a little crazy at times. And he puts me on the line with one person who speaks Spanish who hates my guts, and the other person who speaks no English and, think, and doesn't quite like me yet because she thinks I'm lazy. That changed. We were best friends by the time she left the restaurant. But, so, I'm asking him, and he's only responding to me in Spanish. I'm asking her for help, and she's only responding to me in Spanish. So, I finally decide, hey, Kevin, so-and-so said this to me. What does it say? And he'd look at them, and he'd look at me. And he'd look back at them, and he'd make this face. He'd just say, it's not important, just follow the directions. <laughs> Learning Spanish was very important after that. Mm -hmm. The person in which I'm referring to, who I wasn't really good friends with, because he was a jerk, uh, he's, I was uh, charged with dishes one night. We will call him Bob. Bob was not a nice person. Bob was full of shit. So one night, I'm sitting here doing dishes, and Bob is just, he's riding my ass about every single mistake I've made. And you know when you've spent a day and you know every mistake, you don't need some asshole climbing down your throat telling you all, every single mistake you've made. So we have this long hose that connects to the sink that we do the dishes, and we have soapy water come out of it. It's hot enough to pull the skin off of a chicken. Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> so he's just sitting there ranting and ranting, and I can just keep scrubbing, turn the thing on, turn towards him, and I pour the soap water all over his pants. And then go back to doing dishes while he's shouting at me in insanities and all kinds of, of Spanish, and I don't even know what the hell he's saying, and I'm just working along. And so he looks over to Melvin, he's trying to get me in trouble saying all this stuff about what I shouldn't have done, and Melvin looks at him, says, I'll be in my office, he can come talk to me, and he goes into the walk and it laughs his ass off. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love Melvin. All right. Do, 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 do. Wasabi dodgeball. <laughs> That's the thing. Yes. We had a particular dishwasher that thought it'd be fun to take all that wasabi left over from the sushi bar and he'd throw it up onto the ceiling and it'd stick there. <laughs> He thought it'd be really fun to do that for over a week. You'd be surprised how much wasabi we don't go through in a week. So, one night, Melvin walks in and he looks up. 
then there's th this stalactite cave bear look thing of green wasabi hanging from the ceiling over the dish pit. Now, I will say this about my mentor. He never gets angry. I can count up on one hand the amount of times he has gotten angry. So he stands up inside of the sink when we're not very busy, and he starts scraping all this wasabi off the ceiling, and he makes big balls out of them. He pulls everybody off the line, all of our prep cooks, everybody lines us up in front of the dish pit. He says, all right, I want you all to throw this wasabi at the dishwasher. Do it! <laughs> and then we made the dishwasher clean it up, and he promised to never do it again. <laughs> See, punishment like that works so much better than getting angry. It's so much better for you. Another l fun little quirk about our restaurant our walk-in only opened on the outside. You could get locked inside of it a lot. I can't tell you how many times I got locked in there. But you see, whenever you're inside of a walk-in, there's a push button to be able to get back outside, which, watch with which our walk-in was missing. So one day, Melvin got locked inside of the, the walk-in and nobody knew. And the manager was inspecting the kitchen. So manager's over by the line and is like, where's Melvin? Where the hell is that guy? He was frantically trying to get out of there. So he, what does he do? He pulls out a stem of lemongrass. And he takes it in that little hole where the button's supposed to be and he starts shoving it in there and twisting it around. Kind of working on it. And so he finally, it breaks off, but somehow he miraculously gets the thing to open and he comes out and success, I'm free! And there's the owner staring at him while he's got his hands in the air and he's got this piece of lemongrass hanging from his fist. <laughs> Is there something you want to tell me, Melvin? No, sir. <laughs> Hannah, get over here. You have small fingers. Clean out the walk-in. What? <laughs> so, yeah. And finally, the last one is a lesson in Spanish. <laughs> All of you know there are certain words in Spanish you are not supposed to say around customers. Even more, there are certain words in Spanish you're not supposed to say in front of the, the kitchen people because they will kill you. We had a server with us who, she had come over from Korea and she was still learning English and she wanted to learn more about Spanish. And I claim no responsibility for this whatsoever. I'm sitting there working on my laptop, so she's asking me these various words in Spanish uh, that she can po possibly use. I say, well, what's a word I can call somebody when, they, when they're acting stupid? Oh, well, you can call them a bendejo. I don't know why this idea crossed her mind, but she be, lin, turns around, leans over to the pass, which leads straight into the kitchen, and shouts for all of everybody in the kitchen to hear, Bendeha! <laughs> Silence in the kitchen. <laughs> I look over and I see Melvin, and the Spanish lady, and our dishwasher, I'll go, <laughs> And he comes out, and he's got this, this look on his face, and he's, Miss? Yes? Did, did, you, did you say Mendejo? Well, yeah, yeah, I did. I was, just, I was just practicing Spanish that Hannah taught me. <laughs> that is between you. Don't get me involved in this. And Melvin gives me face, looks back to her, and says, um, you don't call people that from Mexico. Um, they don't like that at all. Like, it's the equivalent of calling them this. Oh, sh should I go a pot? No. Should I, should I go see? I'm sorry. No. And all the while, I'm trying to crawl underneath my laptop, make myself as small as possible so, so as to avoid this, the glaring of a giant angry Mexican man. Yeah, I paid later that evening because we were having a water balloon fight with the, with the front of the house against the back of the house, except the entire back of the house and the front of the house was chasing me. <laughs> So, those are some of my misadventures inside of the food in industry. It's a fun place to work. I'm sure some of you at least agree with me with that, if not all. I really liked what I learned there. I loved the people I worked with, most of them. Um, okay, there's always that one person and you know it. <laughs> what I'm saying is, it was probably one of the best humbling and experiences I had ever had. And if not for the fact that I got tired of being broke all the time, I would probably go back. <laughs> so, I hope you all enjoyed.